Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure for me to be able to share with you the RDF work on standards. In my presentation, I first would like to give a holistic overview, a perspective on the RDF standard setting work, the what and the why. And then I would like to succinctly outline the vision and the high-level strategy. And in my third part, I'd like to provide a more in-depth perspective in sharing some examples of achievements over the past year which demonstrate how RDF is creating value for the sector through its work on standards. And then in that third point, I'll also like to look ahead with you what are the three key deliverables for the next three years. When we talk about the RDF work on standards, it's important that first we all have a common understanding of what we mean with standards. If you search the internet for a definition on standards, you will find various de definitions. So there is no standard definition for standards. So I've been doing some thinking and I've come up with this, this definition. Standards are codified criteria, instructions, or recommendations. If we use this definition, then we quickly see that it covers a wide range of issues, right from policies, laws, and regulations down to guidelines and fact sheets. So when we talk about standards in IDF, it's important to realize that we are not talking just about the codes of practice or the procedures or, or the standard specifications, but that the scope is much broader than that. Now that we are clear on what we mean with standards, we are ready to move on to the next question, which is why are standards so important that IDF has identified this work as a critical focus area? And there are several reasons for that. First, if we wind back the tape of history, say half a century, then we see that about 50 years ago, the issue of standards was much about product quality and operational efficiency. So the operational stuff. Fast forward 60 years and we live in a time where a host of issues are being codified. Food safety, social, ethical and religious values, sustainability, animal welfare, the degree of authenticity of a food, the degree of naturalness of a food. And all these issues affect the dairy sector. And there's more to come. So that is the first reason, the expanding scope of standards. The second reason why standards are a priority for IDF is that standards can be enablers for trade, but they can also be Stray jackets and even barriers to trade. The third reason why RDF is so active in the standard space is that if you want to shape the future regulatory environment, you've got to be at the table or else you're on the menu. So for these reasons, RDF considers its work on standards as a foundational pillar. It is an independent pillar on its own, but it's also supporting and underpinning the work on the other three priority areas of IDF. We now have a clear understanding of the what and the why. Let's then secondly talk about what IDF is trying to achieve. What is the vision and what is the overarching strategy? RDF needs to be really clear about what it will influence and what it will target. And my observation is that RDF has been particularly active and successful in this green sphere, the drafting of standards. And RDF has done that by providing technical and scientific input. However, RDF has not been so successful in the policy area. And this is where often the biggest impacts are made. Now, don't understand me wrong. Being able to 
influence the standards area, the drafting of standards is very important too. But the impact is much greater when we are able to enable the adoption of favorable policies and able to prevent the adoption of inappropriate policies. On the other end of the spectrum, RDF has tended to shy away from helping to facilitate implementation of standards and has left that to other bodies. But as the world is increasingly becoming like a global village, it will be important and appropriate that RDF also, in selected cases, will facilitate the implementation of standards. So the global dairy sector needs to look at how it can improve its impact at both ends of the spectrum. And RDF will play a very important role in that. But there are also other organizations that play a very important role in this. And RDF needs to partner with such organizations. And that naturally leads us to the high-level strategy for standards. Now, let's start with the vision. You can see that on the right-hand side of the slide. The aim is to increase influence at a policy level, to maintain influence or improve it even at the drafting level, and to facilitate where appropriate the implementation of standards. Now, how does that then translate into a strategy? In terms of strategy, it means that we need to have a clear focus on what we are going to deliver. And RDF has been working on clarifying the high-level framework and has done a stakeholder analysis and a gap analysis. This work is now in a very advanced state, and we are ready to move on to the next part of the strategy, which is for each of the priority areas in the standards area, there will be detailed strategic plans, and we're going to implement them, and we are going to review them on a regular basis. Hence, I would like now to move on to my third point, to share with you some achievements over the past year and the key priorities for the next three years. Now, to highlight the value that has been created by RDF in the past year, I've selected three achievements which demonstrate that RDF's output in the standards area has a broad international impact. The first example I would like to share with you is the impact of RDF's work on, within Codex. The draft regional standard for Asia for soybean products included the term milk. And if that had been ratified, it would have been given the impression that soy beverages are milk. Just imagine you are the customer in Asia and you see a soy milk package and you say, hola, soy milk. And the package says back to you, hello, I'm milk. So through RDF's input, the term milk was removed and because it was not consistent with other codex regulations, and it would have been misleading to consumers. And the value of this outcome is that the dairy, for this dairy sector is that the term milk is preserved for dairy, in Asia at least, and consequently will have a positive impact and effect on the perception and sales of milk. The second achievement that I'd like to share with you is the important outcome from RDF submissions to the World Health Organization drought guidelines on sugars. RDF requested that the definition on sugars be clarified so that the text clearly states that there is no evidence that sugars naturally present in milk and dairy products have adverse effects. And following those comments, the World Health Organization stated in its final guidelines there is no evidence for the consumption that the consumption of sugars naturally present in milk have adverse effects. And by having this exclusion made, plain dairy products have a place in a balanced diet. The third achievement I'd like to share with you is the development of a joint RDF ISO standard on the enumeration of lactic acid bacteria. 
and it's by, done by a new technique, flow cytometry. There is an existing technique, it's a plate count technique, and this new technique, however, has lower variation, it can differentiate between active and total cells, and it can be adapted for high-level th throughput. Now, this standard will be published very soon, in the next few weeks, so this is hot off the press, and it will assist in assessing, in dairy companies, in assessing the quality of starter cultures, of probiotics and fermented milk products. Now, this work is already attracting international attention by organizations such as the AOEC International and the International Probiotics Association, which demonstrates the impact of the work. So these three examples are clear examples of RDF's impact on standard setting. Let's now look forward and consider the three key priorities for 2016 to 2018. First, RDF must maintain its capability to interact actively with codex elementarius, both in a proactive and in a reactive manner. And a key deliverable for RDF is to achieve the input of scientific and technical knowledge into the work on dairy-related standards. Another key deliverable is to maintain the differentiation of the nitrogen conversion factor, and Miriam already referred to that. And that project has recently been adopted or endorsed by the IDF board as a high priority project. The second key priority is to engage with other standardization organizations to promote global harmonization of dairy-related standards. And that includes developing analytical standards for infant formula, and particularly the determination of micronutrients in infant formula. And that is work that is done together with the AOAC International and ISO. And not only developing those standards, but also ensuring that those analytical standards are adopted by Codex as international reference methods. Furthermore, IDF intends to develop a collaboration with the US Pharmacopeia to focus on methods of analysis and sampling and food ingredient standards relating to dairy. The third key priority is to increase statistical and epidemiological resources to support RDF's work on methods of analysis and animal health and welfare. And these, this work is really important to, as an enabler to ensure that the work of methods of analysis of sampling and animal health and welfare can proceed. I'd like now to conclude my presentation by summarizing the value that IDF's work on standards will create if it achieves, if RDF achieves these ambitious goals. First, RDF will help shape the future regulatory framework. It's all about mitigating risks and creating opportunities. Second, RDF will help promote global harmonization of standards. Why? To facilitate the international trade of dairy. And third, RDF will create synergy by levering, leveraging resources external to the organization. In conclusion, that means that the sector will be better placed to provide nutritional security to a growing global population because standards, regulatory frameworks, and nutritional security are closely interlinked, and we may need to oil that machine to make it tick like clockwork. Thank you.